for millions of years. This strange and secretive creature has roamed the earth. This ancient animal is so unique and unchanged that it is considered a living fossil. This is the Indian spotted chevrotain, also called the mouse deer. Mouse deer were once abundant in India, but habitat degradation and poaching have dramatically reduced their wild populations. But something happened at the Nehru Zoological Park in Hyderabad that changed everything. An inspired program was started to revive the population. A program that saw the mouse deer come back, returning to places where it had once gone extinct. Most deer are found in some of the evergreen and deciduous forests of India. They are a very important species for the well-being of an ecosystem. They help disperse seeds and form an important prey base for some of the large and small carnivores. But their status in the wild was precarious. The Telangana State Forest Department has been entrusted by the Central Zoo Authority to take up one of the initiatives of captive breeding of those species which are dwindling in numbers in our own forest areas. One such project Telangana department has taken up in the Hyderabad Zoo is the mouse deer captive breeding and as well as reintroduction into the wild. The Nehru Zoological Park in Hyderabad is one of the premier zoos in India. Spread across 380 acres, it had the space and infrastructure to support a critical project like this one. With past experience in conservation breeding, the Nehru Zoo became the natural choice for the mouse deer captive breeding and reintroduction program. Now, zoo has many objectives. And one of the objectives of the zoo is to kind of help protection of the genetic pool of a particular species. And if possible, to replenish it, reintroduce it in wild on a later date. In 2010, the project began with a founding population of six individuals. With such a small number of founders, a scientifically developed breeding plan was of utmost importance. With the help of CSIR, Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, a conservation breeding protocol was established. At Lacons, we have uh, ability to uh, genotype individuals, identify the founders, and tell them which are the founders which are uh, the most variable genetically so that you can use them for the breeding program. Uh, and that has helped the population uh, that has grown now uh, in the zoo to be uh, very heterogeneous. During the course of the program, some interesting facts about mouse deer breeding came to light. Unlike most other mammals, mouse deer females come into estrus almost immediately after they give birth. This was a significant finding. This meant that the captive population could grow at a much faster rate. Instead of separating the males from the females at the time of giving birth, they were now left together and this immediately showed results. From six individuals, the number rose to more than 300 within nine years. With a rapidly growing population, the infrastructure and animal husbandry needs had to keep pace. The breeding center has grown from having one block with eight pens to now having three blocks with more than 60 pens. Maintaining a healthy population of captive bred animals requires work around the clock. The enclosures are enriched to provide a suitable habitat for the moss deer. Since they are shy animals, providing hiding places for them is critical. Fresh vegetation is added on a daily basis for the mouse deer to rest and feed. The team of animal keepers and biologists constantly monitor the enclosures. Hygiene is a very critical requirement for the maintenance of a disease-free environment. The enclosures are constantly cleaned and sterilized. Continuous monitoring and maintaining a hygienic environment have been key to the success of the breeding program. 
One of the initial challenges was understanding the food habits of the mouse deer. Very little was known about the dietary requirements of the Indian species. But some background research helped solve this problem. A lot of uh, inputs and a lot of uh, research had gone into the feeding pattern also. Over the years, uh, we have tried to incorporate different varieties of feed and also different methods of feeding. We give mouse deer uh, fruits, vegetables, green grasses like uh, lucerne and uh, apples, bananas, uh, sweet potato. With a mix of fruits, vegetables and grains, the mouse deer receive a balanced diet. Sometimes the animals are also administered medicines and deworming tablets through their food. The animals are also monitored on a daily basis for their health status. Through fecal samples, the animals are constantly screened for diseases. With such high densities, disease can spread quickly. The animals are regularly vaccinated against contagious and infectious diseases. Injuries are common since these are highly territorial species which leads to a lot of infighting. These are addressed immediately. If any animal found sick, immediately we'll take the help of your veterinary section. We'll treat the animal immediately. Every animal that resides in the breeding center is DNA fingerprinted. They are then radio tagged with microchips for accurate individual identification. This identification is critical for tracking the progress of the animals through their lifetime. The animals that are selected for the reintroduction program are about six months old. Eight animals, two males and six females are chosen for every batch of reintroduction. These animals will leave the safety of the zoo to a new adventure in the wilderness. Once the Nehru Geological Park stabilized the population of the mouse deer, then we took up the exercise of releasing it into the wild. Since this was being done for the first time, we requested CCMB to develop a protocol for that. They developed a protocol based on a scientific approach and very successful reintroduction of mouse deer was done into Amrabad Tiger Reserve. The Amrabad Tiger Reserve is located 150 kilometers from the Nehru Zoological Park. It is one of the sites chosen for the reintroduction program. The Tiger Reserve is covered in deciduous forests, an ideal habitat for mouse deer. About 30-40 years back, this area was having already mouse deer. So of late, we are not finding in this place. So this is one of the perfect place as a habitat for mouse deer release. The reintroduction process is strategically planned to help the animals transition from their life in captivity to an independent life in the wild. This is a gradual stepwise process. For these young animals, this is the first experience of being out of cages and being surrounded by open wilderness. The soft release facility is divided into three zones, each one with different sets of parameters, but all designed to make the moisture less and less dependent on human support. Zone 1 is the stabilization zone. It mimics the conditions of the forest outside, but the moisture will be provided with food, like in the zoo, but also supplemented with wild species. They are also given water in a bowl, just like in the zoo. The deer also have the luxury of an artificial shelter. With the comfort of some zoo-like facilities, the animals are given 14 days to settle down. This makes their transition from the protected zoo conditions easier. After this period, the animals are transferred to the second zone. This is the acclimatization zone. Here, some of the support is withdrawn. They will be provided a little food, but the deer will have to learn to forage for themselves. Water is dispensed through sprinklers. These will create puddles that the mouse deer will have to find and drink from. In this zone, there is minimal human contact. However, the animals are monitored discreetly to check on their performance. The final zone is the pre-release zone. This is almost like the wild conditions outside, other than the fact that they are still within the safety of the fenced area. There is absolutely no support in terms of food and water. But this zone is connected to the outside. 
the animals are forced to move out and fend for themselves. These are the final steps to complete independence. Indirect methods of monitoring are used to assess their performance outside the soft release facility. Fecal samples are collected to check for signs of disease or parasite infestation. Camera traps are set in different areas of the park to monitor the performance of the animals that move out. The moment of truth of this great effort comes when a mouse deer leaves the safety of these human facilities and moves into the wild and be at home in the vast wilderness of the park. Once we were satisfied that this reintroduction is successful, then we thought we should move to other geographical area and then we selected Kinnasani Wildlife Sanctuary. There also we have successfully reintroduced this mouse deer and uh, now we are going to release that in the Pocharam Sanctuary also so that we will have experience and we can compare the success of the reintroduction in the various parts of Telangana. Since its inception in 2010, the mouse deer reintroduction program has come a long way. From six individuals, it has come up to more than 300 individuals now. More than 140 mouse deer have been released into the wild in three different sites. Subsequent to the release, there is evidence of mouse deer breeding in Amarabad Tiger Reserve. A fawn has also been observed in the Kinarasani Wildlife Sanctuary. These are positive signs that the mouse deer are establishing themselves as a breeding population in the reintroduced sites. With the success of mouse deer breeding in captivity in Nehru Zoological Park, uh, with, that, with our team of uh, animal keepers, then our uh, feed store in charge, our biologist, our uh, efficient veterinary team. We are now thinking that uh, we can handle the conservation breeding of other endangered species also. This is an amazing story of how a well-planned and scientifically managed reintroduction program can help bring back wild populations. These are still early days in the project. But to see a moisture that is born in captivity, roaming the wild, is a message of hope for all of our wilderness.